Question one wants us to add and write our answer in scientific notation. Ah, so to add, the exponents have to match, so we're going to change this to be a 20 instead of a 19. When you change the exponent higher, the number up front needs to be a lower. Uh, the first number is not going to change. Uh, now we just need to have 10 to the 20 in our answer, and we add 9.29 and 0.98, and we're going to get 7, 12, 10.27. Now that would be our answer, but it says write your answer in scientific notation. Uh, so we need to change this to 1.027. The number gets smaller, so the exponent needs to get bigger. So that's the answer to question one. Question two wants us to subtract, so let's make the exponents match. Let's make this a 10, just like the first number. When you make the exponent bigger, the number up front needs to get smaller, and since we changed it twice, the number up front, the decimal needs to move twice. That's why it's 0 0.08. The first number doesn't change. So now that the exponents match, we can just subtract 6 minus 0 0.08. Let's add some zeros here. 6 minus 0 0.08 is going to be... 5.92 times 10 to the 10th. Question 3 wants us to subtract as well. Uh, let's make sure the exponents match, so let's make that a 15. The exponent got bigger, the number up front is going to get smaller. The decimal moved twice because our exponent moved twice. And our first number is not changing. Uh, now that our exponents match, let's subtract 2 minus 0 .8, 0 0.083. Going to need to do some borrowing here. 10 minus 3 is 7, 9 minus 8 is 1, 9 minus 0 is 9, 1.917 times 10 to the 15. Question 4 wants us to add. Let's make this a 17. Our exponent got three bigger, so our number up front needs to get three uh, decimal places smaller. So one, two, three. It needs to be 0 0.003. One, two, three. Yes, it was three times. The first number is not changing. Uh, so when we add 2.05 and 0 0.003, we get 2.053. times 10 to the 17th power. Question 5 wants us to add. So let's make the exponents match. This got bigger, so this is going to get smaller. Now the exponents match. Let's just add the numbers out front. 9.37 and 0.6 adds up to be 9.97 times 10 to the 14. Question 6 wants us to subtract. Let's change this to a 12, which changes this to a 0 0.7. And hey, now that the exponents match, let's subtract 8.81 minus 0.7. And we're going to get 8.11 times 10 to the 12th. Question 7 wants us to subtract. Let's change this to a 14 and this to a 0.8. Let's not change the first number. Let's subtract 1.7 minus 0.8 and get 0 0.9. This should be our answer, but that's not in scientific notation. 0.9 is too small. So let's make that 9 instead. We move the decimal once, make it 9. We make the number up front bigger, so the exponent needs to get smaller. So the answer is 9 times 10 to the 13. Question 8 wants us to add. Let's make the smaller exponent become bigger, and the number up front becomes smaller. Let's add 8.8 and 0.14, and get 8.94. 
times 10 to the 19th. Question 9 wants us to solve for u. So well, there's variables on both sides, so let's move the smaller variable. Uh, well, they're both the same variable, so it doesn't matter. When I do plus 5u to both sides, uh, they're both going to cancel, and we're going to be left with 20 equals 20. This equation is going to have infinite solutions because that's a true statement. Infinite solutions. Question 10 wants us to solve for q. There's variables on both sides, and this one is the smaller one, so let's move it by doing plus 5q to both sides. And we get negative 2 equals 88 plus 10q. Uh, let's get everything away from the q, so minus 88 to both sides, and we get negative 90 equals 10q. Divide both sides by 10, and we get q equals negative 9. Question 11 wants us to solve for h. There's variables on both sides. Let's move this one because it's the smaller one. So when we do minus h to both sides, we get 45 plus 5h equals 80. Now let's move everything away from the h. Let's do minus 45 to both sides and get 5h equals 35. When you divide both sides by 5, you get h equals 7. Question 12, let's solve for p. This is the smaller variable, so let's move it. Do minus 3p to both sides. We're going to get 19, negative 19 plus 6p equals negative 85. Let's move this 19 now and do plus 19 to both sides. We're going to get 6p. Negative 85 plus 19 is going to be 50 minus 9 is 6. 7 minus 1 is 6. I mean negative 66. And we divide both sides by 6, we get p equals negative 11. Question 13. There's variables on both sides. Let's move the smaller one, which is negative 7i. Let's do plus 7i to both sides. We're going to get 24 equals negative 44 plus 17i. Uh, let's get this 44 to go away by doing plus 44 to both sides, and we get 68 equals 17i. We divide both sides by 17. We get i equals 4. Question 14. Uh, there's variables on both sides. Let's move the smaller one, so minus t to both sides, and we get 9t plus 2 equals 110. Subtract 2 from both sides and we get 9t equals 108. We divide both sides by 9. We get t equals, I believe that's 12, let's double check. 9, 12 times 9, 108. t equals 12. Question 15. Let's move the smaller variable, which is negative 8k. Let's do plus 8k to both sides. We're going to get negative 27 plus 17k equals negative 163. Let's do plus 27 to both sides, and we're going to get 17k equals, when we combine those, we get 6, one, negative 136. Uh, let's divide this. 136 divided by 17, I believe is 8. Let's double check that. Yep, uh, it's okay. When we divide both sides by 17, we get k equals negative 8. Question 16. Let's do plus 3r to both sides. This is the smaller one, right, because it's more negative. And we're going to get 2r minus 1 equals negative 9. Do plus 1 to both sides, and you get 2r equals negative 8. Divide both sides by 2, and get r equals negative 4. Question 
Question 17 wants us to reflect across the x-axis. This is the x-axis, so our shape is below it. It's going to be reflected across from it, uh, above it. Uh, so D and E are both one point below the line I just drew, so they're both going to end up one point above the line I just drew. F is one, two, three below, so it's going to be one, two, three above, F prime. C is four below, one, two, three, four, so it needs to be one, two, three, four above. That's C prime. Let's connect these with a ruler. There we go. Question 18 wants us to reflect across the line X equals one. So we need to draw a line that hits the x-axis at 1. This is the x-axis. This is 1. Our line needs to go right here because it needs to hit the x-axis. If our line wasn't up and down, it would never hit the x-axis. It would never hit that number 1 that we needed it to hit. So since our mirror is up and down, our shape's going to move left and right. T is 1, 2, 3 to the left, so it needs to be 1, 2, 3 to the right. W is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 to the left, so it needs to be 6 to the right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. W. U is 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. V, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. V prime goes right there. Let's connect these with a ruler. There we go. Question 18 is done. Question 19, let's reflect across the line y equals negative 2. y equals negative 2 means go to the y-axis and go to negative 2 and draw a line that hits that number. If we drew a line up and down, it would never hit the y-axis, so the line we're drawing needs to go across left to right horizontal. That means our mirror uh, is going to take the shape and move it down, flip it down, I should say, uh, L doesn't move because it's on the mirror. M is 1, 2, 3, 4 above. It needs to be 1, 2, 3, 4 below. M prime. N is 1, 2, 3, 4 above. 1, 2, 3, 4 below. K is 2 above. So it needs to be 2 below. Uh, let's connect them in the right order. N, M, L, K. N, M, L, K. They're connected in the right order. Question 20 wants us to reflect across the line x equals negative 2. The x-axis is right here. Negative 2 is right here. For us to hit that negative 2, our line needs to go up and down. So our mirror is up and down. Our shape is going to move left and right. Q is 2 on this side, so it needs to be 2 on this side. M is 1, 2, 3, 4 away. 1, 2, 3, 4 away on this side. N is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 away on this side. P is 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Let's make sure we're connecting them in the right order. P, N, M, Q. P, N, M, Q. There we go, that's question 20. Question 21 wants us to reflect across the y-axis. This is the y-axis. So we need to reflect this way. Since s is 1 to the left, it needs to be 1 to the right. t is 1, 2, 3 away. 1, 2, 3 away. t prime. r is 1, 2, 3 away. 1, 2, 3 3 away, and U is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, U prime. Let's connect them with a ruler, and we have our reflection. Question 22 wants us to reflect across the line X equals negative 1. So our line needs to hit this point, negative 1, it needs to hit all of these negative 1s, it needs to go up and down, right? there. So let's reflect this. K and J are 2 away, so they should be 2 away on this side. K 
K prime and J prime. I is one, two, three, four away. One, two, three, four away. H and L are one, two, three, four, five, six away on the left. One, two, three, four, five, six away on the right. And let's make sure we connect them in the right order. L, K, J, I, H. L, K, J, I, H. There we go, there's our reflection. Question 23 wants us to reflect across the line y equals negative 1. Here's the y-axis, here's negative 1. Our line is right there. Uh, let's reflect going down. G is 1 up, it's 1 below. C is 1, 2, 3 above, 1, 2, 3 below. D is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 above, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 below. E and F are 1, 2, 3 above, 1, 2, 3 below. So let's connect them in the right order. C, D, E, F, G. C, D, E, F, G. There we go. Question 24 wants us to reflect across the x-axis, which is right here. So this point is 1 below, now it's 1 above. This point is 5 below, now it's 5 above. This point is also 5 below, so it's also 5 above. Connect them with a ruler and we have our new shape, y prime, a prime, z prime. Question 25, define the word perpendicular. This is the symbol for perpendicular. Now the word perpendicular means that two angles are, no, I don't like that. Two lines intersect to form right angles. So this line and this line are perpendicular because look, they made right angles. They actually made four right angles. Perpendicular means that lines intersected to make right angles. Congruent. Congruent, the symbol for congruent is this. And congruent means that they, uh, uh, two items are the same. Okay, so congruent is similar, uh, it's, it's very close to being the word equal, but we use congruent to describe uh, shapes and uh, things in geometry. Equal is what we use to describe numbers. So congruent means that uh, two items are the same. Coefficient, define coefficient and give an example. So in this problem, two is the coefficient. Uh, because coefficient is the number in front of a variable. So in this problem, 2 is the coefficient. Uh, there's also a 2 exponent. We're talking about this 2 right here. Question 28. The three angles of any triangle always add up to 180 degrees. There's always three angles in a triangle, and they always add up to 180 degrees. Question 29, which choice shows the reciprocal of 4? Reciprocal means we're going to take this 4, which is secretly 4 over 1, and we're going to flip it upside down. Reciprocal means you switch the numerator and the denominator. So we're looking for the choice where the 4 is now on the bottom, and the 1 that used to be on the bottom is now on the top. Horizontal is a line that goes left to right. Or west to east, or a line that looks like the x-axis. Question 31, the four angles of any quadrilateral always add up to, a quadrilateral has four sides, always. So a square, a rectangle, a rhombus, trapezoid, 
These are all quadrilaterals. Uh, and all quadrilaterals always, the angles add up to 360. And if you don't believe me, uh, four angles of a square are all 90, and they would all be 4 times 90. They all add up to 360. That works for all of these shapes. Any quadrilaterals angles add up to 360. Uh, question 32, define median. Median is the middle number in a list of numbers when they are in order from least to greatest. So the median is the middle number, but you can only say that when the numbers are ordered from smallest to largest, from least to greatest. Question 33 wants us to find the volume of the cylinder. Here's the formula for volume. Uh, the formula for volume is pi times r squared times h. So all we need to do is plug in the r and the h. So in this problem, we just copy pi. The radius is 4, so 4 squared. And the height is 6.5. So all we do is on our calculator just type that. So we do pi times r squared times h. And we get 326.7, round to the nearest tenth is 0.7, and uh, it was measured in inches, so our units would be uh, inches to the third power, cubic inches. Question 34 shows us a marble. Uh, we just use this formula, and all this formula has is uh, the radius. So we just need to type in our calculator 4 thirds times pi times the radius. Uh, they gave us the diameter is 60. Diameter is all the way across. We don't want all the way across. We just want halfway across. That's what the radius is. So we're going to put in 30 to the third power. So on our calculators, we're going to do 4 thirds times pi times 30 to the third power. And uh, it says our answer should be rounded to the nearest tenth. So our answer is going to be 113097, whoops, 097.3. I'm going to write that again. 113097.3 and these were measured in millimeters so it's going to be cubic millimeters so 113,097 and three tenths cubic millimeters question 35 wants us to find the volume of the cylinder so all we have to do is type in our calculator pi times the radius, which is 5 squared, times the height, which is 4.5. So on our calculator, we're going to type pi times 5 squared times 4.5, and we're going to get to the nearest tenth, 353.4, measured in inches, so cubic inches. Question 36, uh, if a cylinder has a volume of 2,814.9 square inches and a radius of 8 inches, find the height of the cylinder. So now they want us to find h in this problem. So we're going to take this formula, v equals pi r squared h. There's three letters here. We're going to change all the letters that we know into the numbers that we know. So we're going to take this 2814.9, we're going to put it in for v. We're going to take the r is 8 and put it in for r. We don't know the height, so we're just going to leave it as the height. Um, if we want to know the height, we have to get rid of this times pi and this times 8 squared. So if we divide by pi, then it will go away. And then if we also uh, divide by 8 squared, that will go away, and we'll be left with just h. 
So we need to put the 8 squared down here as well. So the height is this whole problem on our calculator, 2814.9 divided by, I want to put this in parentheses because I want to make sure on our calculator that we multiply all of that before we divide. This whole denominator needs to divide into the whole numerator. So when I type this on my calculator, I'm going to put parentheses around that. So our height, and it says rounded to the nearest tenth of an inch, uh, is going to be 2814.9, close parentheses, divided by, open parentheses, pi times 8 squared. We're going to get 14.000, so we're near, nearest tenth would be 14 inches. Question 37 wants us to find the volume, so we just need to type in our calculator, pi times the radius, uh, which is 0 0.15 squared, times the height. Uh, now, I know the cylinder's on side, but the height is uh, the length, so it's 15. So we just have to type that on our calculator, and we're going to get pi times... 0.15 squared times the height, and we get nearest hundredth, 1.06 cubic inches. Question 38 wants us to find the volume, so we're just going to type 4 thirds times pi times the radius, which is 32, to the third when we type this on our calculator, we do 4 thirds times pi times 32 to the third power. Our answer rounded to the nearest hundredth is 1372.58.28. 137,258.28 cubic centimeters, like that. Question 39 wants us to find the volume of this cone, so the formula is one-third times pi times the radius, uh, which is one-fourth, so I'm going to type, I'm going to put 0 0.25, uh, times the height, which is three. So we just have to type that on our calculator. One third times pi times 0.25 times 3. Rounded to the nearest hundredth would be 0 0.79 cubic feet. Question 40 wants us to find the volume of this sphere. So on our calculator, we're going to type 4 thirds times pi times the radius to the third power. So if we type 4 thirds times pi times 5.5 .5 to the third power, our answer rounded to the nearest hundredth is 696.91 cubic centimeters. Question 41 wants us to translate. So we just have to follow the directions. It says right five and up two. That means, that means we need to move this to the right five and up two. So each point needs to go one, two, three, four, five right, one, two. T prime is right there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, S prime goes right there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, R prime goes right there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, U prime goes right there. Connect the dots with a ruler, and we have our new shape. Question 42 wants us to translate down six units. 1, 2, 1, 2 3, 4, 5, 6, G prime is right there. 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. F prime is right there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. E prime is right there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. D prime is right there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. C prime is right there. C, D, E, F, G. Connected in the same order. Question 43 wants us to translate to the right two units and up two units. Right two, up two. A prime is right there. Right two, up two. Z prime is right there. Right two, up two. Y prime is right there. When we connect all these, we get the same shape, just moved up a little bit. Question 44 wants us to move to the left four and down two. One, two, three, four, 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 down two. If we connect these, we get the same shape. Question 45, translate to the right once and up two. Right one, up two, L prime is right there. Right one, up two, N prime is right there. Right one, up two, M prime is right there. Let's connect them. They get the same shape, just moved up a little bit. 46 wants us to move to the left one and down four. Left one, down four. Left one, down four. Left one, down four. Left one, down four. Connect them. There we go. 47 wants us to move to the right six and down one. Right six down one right six down one right six down one right six down one connect we have our answer and 48 wants us to move to the right five and down four one two three four five one, two, three, four, that's K prime. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, that's L prime. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, H prime. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, J prime. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, I prime. Let's connect all these. And we have our new shape.